Whether you want to run a faster 5k or a marathon, focusing on improving your speed isn't the answer. Rather, you need to develop your running endurance. Building your running endurance is the only way to ensure that you can run faster for longer. Here are the three aspects of endurance in order of importance and trainability we all need to build to become better runners. Number one, metabolic endurance. The most fundamental aspect of your running fitness to work on if you want to run faster for longer is your metabolic endurance, which is effectively the way your body functions on a physiological level while you're running. When I talk about improving your aerobic fitness or your lactate threshold in other videos, this is exactly what I'm talking about. Your metabolic endurance determines how hard you can push each energy system and for how long. For us runners, the aerobic energy system is the star of the show, with your anaerobic energy systems playing supporting roles. As an example, let's take Pete. Pete is a 32-year-old runner who's done plenty of 10Ks and now wants to run for longer. He's stepping up to run a half marathon with a view to running a marathon later in the coming year. Although Pete's very much used to training for the 10k distance, until recently he's never really run much farther than 8 miles. Now with his new focus on longer distances, he's increasing his weekly long run distance. Much to his surprise, Pete's found out that once he gets up to around about 12 miles, his legs begin to feel really heavy and sluggish. As much as he doesn't really feel out of breath, his heavy legs force him to slow down. Pete's problem is twofold, but easily fixed, and the answer lies in his metabolic endurance. As a guy who's played plenty of team sports in the past, his tendency is to push himself a little too hard and run these longer runs too fast. It's something he used to be able to get away with while his training runs were shorter, but now he's running longer distances, the lactate building in his blood as a result of pushing too hard hits a critical point where he's forced to slow down. His second issue is the fact that he's always been able to rely on his ability to push himself to run around his lactate threshold for about an hour to get 10k races done. But now that he's trying to run longer distances, this just isn't doable. What's being exposed is his lack of aerobic endurance, the factor that underpins running performance for us all. Now that Pete's training calls for him to run longer distances at a slower pace, he finds that he hasn't got the stamina to do so. The solution for Pete is to dedicate the next 12 to 16 weeks on building a solid base of aerobic endurance by easing back on the pace to the point that he's able to hold a conversation while he's running, which feels almost uncomfortably slow for him, and focus on increasing both his weekly running mileage and his long run distance. Knowing that he ultimately wants to run a marathon soon, if he can build towards 35 miles per week and a long run of 12 to 14 miles, he'll be in a great place to start his marathon plan. At that point, with his aerobic base training in the bank, he can then integrate some faster tempo running workouts to further improve his metabolic endurance by training close to his lactate threshold, training his body to run harder for longer. A great tempo run for Pete to try would be a progression run, like 10 minutes at his easy long run pace, then 10 minutes, 1 minute slower than his 10k race pace, followed by 10 minutes at his 10k race pace. But ultimately, the most important factor in improving your metabolic endurance is your weekly running mileage. Relatively high mileage at an easy pace, weekly long runs, and consistency above all else will improve Pete's endurance running no end. I always say to runners like Pete, who are on their journey towards running their first marathon, that you know you're heading in the right direction with your training when running 10 miles feels like 10k. Number two, running economy. The next key factor in improving your endurance is your body's ability to effectively use energy and how much energy your body needs for a single stride, known as your running economy. Runners like Elliot Kipchoge and Jakob Ingebrigtsen use far less energy per stride than your average runner, which partially explains how they're able to run at such a pace for so long. Metabolic endurance is the key to running faster for longer, but another important area is focusing on how you run. Get this right and you'll become a more economical runner, using less energy to run at a given pace, leaving more in the tank for later. As an example, meet Mark. Mark's been running since he was in his mid-twenties, but has never really focused on his running form or consistent training at all for that matter. Now he's in his late 30s, he finds that the unlimited pool of energy we seem to have in our younger years is no longer there. 
Mark accepts that these days of him running races with minimal training are over, so he decides to be smarter and researches different training methods, including working on proper running form. While Mark discovers that running high mileage at an easy pace is a good way to build endurance, he's surprised to learn that there's also a place for running short distances at a fast pace. If you haven't seen my previous video on 5 easy things pro runners do to run faster, then I highly recommend you check it out, as one of the areas I cover is strides. I'll leave a link in the description. Strides are very short reps of running that allow you to work on your neuromuscular coordination, which will help you to maintain good running form as you get tired. So Mark decides to go for a normal run, then afterwards he eases into 5 sets of approximately 30 seconds running, accelerating up to his mile pace. In the first 5 seconds of each rep, he solely focuses on form, ensuring that he lands light underfoot. He maintains this feeling for 15-20 to 20 seconds or so, then gently slows down to a walk. He then takes a break for a couple of minutes and starts over again until the 5 are done and it's time to cool down. Focusing on form like this, on tired legs, is teaching Mark's brain and neuromuscular system as a whole to maintain an efficient running style even when he's tired, which will help to improve his running economy. That, of course, is just one way to work on your running economy, by improving your form consciously, but it has to be noted that probably the most powerful way to improve your running economy is, in fact, just to run more. Your body is amazing. Through running more, and the volume of running strides you take week after week, your body will optimise your running form to suit your individual biomechanics, and find the most economical way for you to move. That's another reason to perhaps look at where you can squeeze a few more miles each week, but no more than 10% more than the average of the previous few weeks in any given increase. By the way, if you want to learn more about becoming a more efficient runner through improving your running form, check out the Midfoot Project by RunSmart. It's an excellent program and I'll leave the link down in the description. Number 3. VO2 Max The third, and probably most misunderstood factor to focus on, is one that's also the hardest to train, and that's your VO2 Max. For many experienced runners, this is a term you'll no doubt be familiar with, but for those who are a little less sure, VO2 max is essentially the maximum rate at which your body can use oxygen effectively in the process of producing energy while you run. The faster and more effectively your body can produce oxygen, the faster you'll be able to run without pushing past your lactate threshold and having to slow down. Take Connor and Duncan for example. They're both in their late 20s and experienced runners having completed several half marathons and regularly competing in 10k races. While they train together and do almost exactly the same schedule, Connor has noticed that Duncan struggles much less as the mileage goes up. Connor wonders why this might be, as they're both of a similar build, come from a similar running background, and do the same training, so one area he suspects might be wildly different between the two runners is their VO2 max. To test this, he and Duncan head to an exercise physiologist's performance lab and take part in a series of submaximal tests. A good VO2 max score is dependent on both age and whether you're male or female, but as Connor and Duncan are both roughly the same age and both male, it's easier to compare the two. It turns out that Connor has a VO2 max of 45.7, while Duncan scores 51.4, and the physiologist explains that with those numbers, Connor is put in the good category, while Duncan is in the excellent category, explaining why he naturally finds it easier to do those long runs. Whilst VO2 max is affected by your genetics, thankfully for Connor, there are some specific running workouts he can do to improve his score. Check out the video on screen right now for three powerful VO2 max workouts pro runners use to run faster, and you can too.